Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of my Tinker Quest Chest Popping series, and this is going to be episode 15, I believe. Just, uh, yeah, no, no different up- actually, no, we have a big update, so I would like to give a special shout out to Altria K. Um, I don't know if he's comfortable with me addressing him by his real name on video, so I'll just refer to him by his username. He has been- uh, I've met him a couple days back, or at the time this video is being released, since I usually have about two chest popping episodes up on queue at all times, it might be like two weeks from now. So let's just say around, um, well, the day I'm recording this video, it is August 19th. I met him a couple days back, and it turns out that he's actually a very, very generous person. I talked to him a little bit, and I told him about my chest popping series, and it turns out he actually watches them, which is awesome, and he's offered to support me by popping a bunch of keys. So, I have gained quite a magnanimous benefactor in a sense because he's making it very easy for me to restock on my marks which means I can get uh go back to doing a double refresh every day since I have access to any key I want in any quantity so I guess you guys can look forward to more frequent chest popping series since that is still to this day my most heavily supported series and I appreciate that so let's just get started Oh man, uh, okay, I know I say this in every episode that I have no idea what I want to talk about and then I figure something out like five seconds later. <laughs> That's a pretty good bag though. Uh, instead, I want to ask you guys something. So less, ab less about me, ew. Less about me and more about what you guys uh, do. So, in the previous episode, I talked about why I still play Realm of the Mad God. But I want to know why do you guys still play Realm of the Mad God? Like. I'm sure in the comment section there'll be people who are talking about it, or who have talked about it, excuse me. And I'm recording this before I upload episode 14, but I still want to ask you guys, like, what about Realm of the Mad God drew you in in the first place? Because when I first started look when I first looked at Realm of the Mad God, I thought it was kind of a boring game. I was like, oh, it just looks like a, you know, a Super Mario shooter or something like that, because I thought Mario was the only game that could be an 8-bit. And uh, it wasn't until my friend he just like very, I guess, fervently tried to persuade me to play the game, and then eventually I just got hooked on it. What about Realm was interesting to you that inspired you to, or that motivated you to want to keep playing? Because it has a very retro feel to it, and while there are a large number of players who enjoy that kind of, I guess, nostalgic vibe from these more older looking games, it's still not exactly something that the general public would find themselves wanting to play. After all, graphics and all that is becoming a much bigger point of concern. It's, you know, what with... There was a whole debate about how Pokemon Sword and Shield, especially with how much, like, they've cut away, how many corners they've cut for the production of Pokemon Sword and Shield. Uh, why did they have such terrible graphics that they just recycled? And I personally don't believe graphics are that conducive to a good game, because certain games like Realm of the Mad God would look terrible in 3D, right? So naturally, it makes sense that... Like, for a game like Pokemon, where graphics actually do kind of play a, par a part, that's like the thing that people enjoy the most in between game to game. And admittedly, I was very impressed when we saw the 3D Pokemon for Pokemon X and Y. Especially since I was comparing it to Pokemon Colosseum and XD Gale of Darkness. But for most other players, graphics are kind of the be-all end-all regardless of what game they're playing. They're just some people who really enjoy the 3D world of, let's say, Breath of the Wild, Super Mario Odyssey, and uh, some who are very passionate about just um, more like 2D side-scrolling platformers, Shovel Knight, Kirby, what have you. Realm in particular though, it's a very bullet hell oriented game, and you really don't think of bullet- the only other game that most people think of bullet hell will be Galaga, which was a long time back. And so, why did you guys play Realm? Uh, I guess if you answer the question, why do you keep playing Realm, then my question to you is why did you pick up Realm in the first place? Was it through a friend? Did you just stumble upon it? Because these are one of those games that you don't really find unless you're actively looking for it, because Tekka and Kabam, they don't do any advertising at all really. I never saw Realm outside of just word of mouth, I guess. But I fell into the charm of it because, I don't know, there was just something really interesting about how, especially when I played in 2012, that was when people were starting to make a much bigger transition to better graphics and more, I guess, photorealistic stuff. So coming back to an 8x8 game that was just about shooting, and at the time it was a flash game, so it didn't feel like it was- I didn't set the bar too high. Okay. 
a C plot would normally be great, but uh, for some reason I've gotten quite a few of these in the past couple of weeks. I think I'm up to like my 14, I think it's like plot number 14 or 15. So I'm not feeling too great about it, since I have too many of them. <laughs> if only I could get a Puri instead. But uh, I don't think mana chests are, uh, mana whites are from the mighty chests. And like I mentioned to you before, I enjoy lifestyle games, games that you can just incorporate into your daily life, and that usually entails MMORPGs, or uh, simulators, or I guess... Uh, would Animal Crossing be considered a simulator? Yeah, probably. And so whatever form that takes is usually enough for me to feel incentivized to play a game. I've, uh, I guess in certain cases you can even consider Pokemon to be a lifestyle game because there's day and night cycles, there's different things you can do. It's just amazing how we can have such a, I suppose, I mean, oh, let me, let me, I just, if this is going to be a first mate's hook, probably, yep. <laughs> I'm trying to wonder though, like, I was thinking about it, what made me want to continue having Realm in my back pocket? Because it's one of those games that I've played on and off a lot. Over time, I just sort of got attached to it in a very, I guess, unique way, because while I've never really played it as much as I have now, uh, I've always kept it in the back of my head, like, hey, how's Realm of the Bad God look? Which is interesting, because I don't really see many games with this kind of art style anymore. In fact, this art style, I would just say, is probably quite extinct. I haven't done too much research on all the indie games and whatnot. But what other games look, or still have this very retro style? I don't think there are any. That's a shame, because while I definitely believe that improvements to graphics and just overall visual aesthetics are very impressive, and I feel like we've made big strides in terms of our visual department, people have just kind of stopped caring about these older looking games in a general sense. It's tragic, because that's kind of how we originated, you know, the whole philosophy of you should always remember your roots. Actually, there are one such... Um, uh, one small detail I notice in a lot of mobile games in particular, so I'm always very happy whenever I see games that have like kind of small sprites. For example, Fire Emblem Three Houses. Probably the best graphics we've seen in a Fire Emblem game, right? Because it's the first home console game in a very long time. But we still have tiny sprites for each of the characters, especially the loading screen when you see by left, like you can kind of move them left and right. I love that because we get to see still like people have some form of appreciation for smaller like you know kind of cutesy looking graphics same with um the 3ds games they could have made full overworld sprites but instead they use just like 2d sprites or not overworld sprites but overworld models tricorn good i actually couldn't eat that tricorn's great this key's also great nice how many of you guys are big into graphics i'm just curious like how much of my viewer base really enjoys like super big graphical games and how many of you guys are kind of indifferent to it? I guess I personally... It, like I mentioned before, it, had, it really depends. There are some games that look great in 3D or some games that have to look 3D and some games that I actually think should stay 2D. Like for example, uh, once again, Realm of the Mad God. If Realm of the Mad God became 3D, I think that would actually just be very bad. <laughs> okay, so we have another orange bag. We're getting more orange bags than we are white bags these days. What's it gonna be? Uh, another hook. <laughs> I expected that. We had a pretty lucky past couple episodes. I am very impressed though with how, even after 10 years or so, uh, Realm has still managed to maintain quite a consistent player base. I certainly don't- I don't think it'll ever become mainstream. Deca has mentioned that they were making efforts to try to maybe push like an advertising campaign, and that's great. But I think just given the the way Realm of the Mad God looks and kind of the grindy nature. People don't like grinding games, that's why everyone enjoys those fast-paced quick fix games like Fortnite or, um, you know, Valorant, Apex Legends, things like that, because those games you can just get a quick game in before work or before school and then that's it. You don't have to, there's no time commitment. You, you can take a break for a month or two or three or four and come back and it'll be kind of the same. Maybe a change here and there with like balance changes, but for the most part, it's exactly the same as you left it. But with other games, like uh, MMOs, you are quote-unquote actively punished if you don't continue to maintain a schedule, because a lot of games have those dailies that you have to do, just daily quests, and um, other things like 
time gated stuff that you if you don't do it if you missed it then you have to you're basically permanently behind for the rest of your life so i don't think it's gonna be ever like mainstream but it would be nice for realm to be bigger because i would like to continue playing the game i do really enjoy playing realm of the mad god more than i thought i would in the past couple of months but eventually there will come a time where i can't play it as much and i have to move on to games that can be a little bit more uh, that have a little more potential in getting bigger like league of legends and I love making League videos, I think I finally found my stride when it comes to the type of content I want to make. But it would be nice to continue making Realm content, if only it was just we can have a slightly bigger player base. There's nothing wrong with the player size as it is right now, the population, because Realm, we're not really hurting for players, we're not, we have no shortage of let's say dungeon count and stuff like that. The servers are still getting full, especially during the evenings. Of course, there's not really much of a chance that Realm is going to grow. And growth is important for video games. Alright, I'm kind of full, so I'm going to go ahead and go on a character and maybe use some of the potions and stuff like that. I'll be right back. I will concede, though, that not every game needs to be popular. In fact, not every game should be popular. There are some games I feel like would be actively ruined if they became mainstream. And I think that's what happened to certain games where, like, they were fine when they were in much smaller communities, but when they became bigger, we've lost something about it, like we've lost the integrity of the game, or something like that. And so I agree. Certain games like Realm of the Mad God, I really don't know what would happen if it became big. In fact, for all I know, it could actually have adverse effects to the state of the community and its health if it became mainstream. But it wouldn't be nice, you know? It would be nice. Okay. Anyways, I think that is my philosophy session for this video. I want to keep it short because I know that I sometimes ramble on for like 5 minutes more even after I've done opening all my chests. So uh, we'll spend the rest of this video just checking up what we got. I don't really have any expectations of getting anything big because at the moment the white bags I want are Oryx 3 whites and you can't get them from these chests. Uh, of course an Omni would still be nice, you know, never, you can't go wrong with an Omni. Oh, uh, some feedback by the way would be appreciated if you think this type of video style is okay for my chest opening vids. I understand some people are not very fond of uh, super long chest opening videos and they would rather it be kind of divvied up into a montage and I've expressed very adamantly that I don't want to do montages because I feel like that's gonna make my video just look too much the same as any other content creator's chest opening videos. But if you do feel like I am maybe I need to script my videos before I talk about them or something like that, let me know because I am aware that sometimes I do jumble my words a lot and I do repeat myself a lot. <sighs> oh, of course. I, I, I tried to stay all casual and not like freak out to see if I can maybe lock out and get a crown. Nope, we get the worst one. <laughs> whatever, whatever. We got a lot of hydras and cosmics. Like of all the of all the tops to get, we've gotten a bunch of cosmics and hydras. What the heck? I also want to say that I really appreciate you guys because I was in a really dark place um, for the first half of 2020. Not necessarily because of COVID. I mean that that exacerbated it, but I was having a really rough time. I was pretty depressed during the spring, but being able to make content for you guys, making uh, League of Legends content, Minecraft content, and Realm. It's really boosted my spirits up a lot, and I really appreciate it because... In my previous community, while I was, I guess, well received, there was just a subgroup of people that kept trying their very best to bring me down. And while I tried to be as stoic about it as possible, we're human beings. We absorb feedback and we absorb the sentiments of other players and other people that watch our videos. So just being able to receive about 99% support, it feels great because I don't have to wake up every morning wondering how many dislikes I'm going to get on a video and stuff, so I just really thank you for that. But I also would like to say that if, in the future, when I inevitably quit Realm and move on to something else, hope you guys can continue to support my content. I'll try my best to find videos to make that apply to anyone regardless of the type of video game they play, because I understand not everyone plays League of Legends and Minecraft, but I'm still working on how I want to build my brand, and I hope you can be patient with that. Uh, as well as when we go into the school year because I mentioned that I'm lowering my video schedule. I hope that doesn't ruin your guys' entertainment of my content too much. 
but I'm also trying to make sure I balance out my time. Anyways, nothing too great we got this time around, I guess. I mean, Prod is okay. Gemstone, it's not bad. It's, it's not bad white, just I wish I got a Bracer or a Crown. We're almost at 15,000 base fame, which is awesome. I think that's the highest I've ever been. That's gonna be it though, guys. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you enjoyed, a rating would be much appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe for future episodes, and I hope to see you again soon in the next video. Take care.